Is the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra a better deal than do-it-yourself? Let's find out in this video. We will start with an overview. Compare it to a DIY setup and then build a DIY system step by step, covering solar panels, wiring and fuel sizes along the way. The base model consists of one inverter and one battery, providing 6 kWh of storage. However, 6 kWh isn't much, because an average American home uses 30 kWh per day. It's unlikely to get most people through the night. To make the setup more practical, we will add a second battery, bringing the total storage up to 12 kWh. Let's dive into the comparison. The cost of the EcoFlow Delta Pro Ultra is $7,000 which includes the inverter and two batteries. Meanwhile, the DIY system costs significantly less, at $4,000, including a hybrid inverter, three 5 kWh batteries and cables. For inverter power, the EcoFlow delivers 7,200 watts, making it capable of handling most household appliances. In comparison, the DIY system provides 6000 watts, which is still sufficient for large loads, but slightly less powerful. Both can provide a split phase output. Looking at battery capacity, the EcoFlow comes with 12 kWh, split between two 6 kWh batteries. The DIY system offers 15 kWh, giving you 25% more storage for longer runtime. When it comes to solar input, the EcoFlow has two inputs. A high voltage input that supports up to 4000 watts and a low voltage input for an additional 1600 watts, totaling 5600 watts. The DIY system supports up to 8000 watts of solar across its dual MPPT controllers with a maximum input voltage of 480 volts. For charging power, the EcoFlow charges at 1800 watts from an AC source, such as a wall outlet. In contrast, the DIY system charges much faster at 9000 watts, provided you have a powerful enough generator or AC source. Both systems have their advantages. The EcoFlow is more portable and user-friendly, while the DIY system offers better performance, higher solar input and more battery capacity for less cost, but is stationary. Now let's take a closer look at how to build the DIY system step by step. We are starting with the EG4 6000XP inverter. This hybrid inverter costs $1400. It has built-in breakers, which make the system easier to install. For batteries, we are using three 48 volt 100 amp hour 5 kilowatt hour batteries from EcoWorthy. Each battery costs seven hundred ninety four dollars, totaling two thousand three hundred eighty two dollars for fifteen kilowatt hours of capacity. This is a very good price. The batteries are connected in parallel, providing a total of 15 kilowatt hours. As you can see, each battery is fused with a marine rated battery fuse for safety, which I highly recommend in parallel setups. We will calculate the wire and fuse sizes later in the video. If you don't like these batteries, you can use server racks instead, but they will cost you $1,200 each for a total of $3,600. Server racks are stackable, requiring less space. It also has a breaker, so you don't need an additional fuse. It's important to note that it's not possible to export the power back to the grid. If you want to do that, you will need the EG4 12K PV, which will cost you $3,500. We can add up to 8000 watts of solar across two MPPTs, much more than the EcoFlow. With 415 watt panels, 
you can connect up to 10 panels in series per MPPT. This gives you a total of 8300 watts in a 10S 2P configuration. Adding solar will cost you around $3500 for panels, which I will link in the description. The price is without wrecking. If you already have solar panels and want to see if they fit on this hybrid inverter, check out my video on how to calculate it. Let's calculate the wire and fuse sizes. We have to figure out where the most power comes from. From the solar panels into the batteries or from the batteries to the inverter. From solar to the batteries is maximum 8000 watts and from the batteries to the inverter is 6000 watts. So we have to calculate for the highest amount, which is solar power. If we divide 8000 watts by 48 volts, we get 166 amps. Then we will apply a safety factor of 1.25 and we get 208 amps. We will use a marine rated battery fuse. A fuse rating higher than 208 amps is 250 amps. Next, we have to find the cable that can carry at least the fuse rating, which is 250 amps. A 1 odd or 55 mm square welding cable is rated for 285 amps. A total of 20 feet red and 20 feet black will cost you $180 including lux. You can also check out the link in the description for pre-crimped cables. But what can you run with 15 kilowatt hours of storage? Let's do a quick load analysis. Imagine you're facing an emergency like Hurricane Helene and need to power only the essentials. Here's a breakdown. Fridge. A fridge has a duty cycle of 30%, meaning the compressor will be on for a total of 8 hours per day. So 150 watts for 8 hours equals 1.2 kilowatt hours. And the same goes for a freezer. 150 watts for 8 hours equals 1.2 kilowatt hours. The microwave, 1500 watts for 20 minutes equals 0.5 kilowatt hours. And for the lights, we have 10 LED bulbs of 5 watts each, and we'll turn them on for 8 hours a day, which is 0.4 kilowatt hours. And don't forget the inverter idle power consumption, which is 40 watts for 24 hours, or 0.96 kilowatt hours. We have a total daily power consumption of 4.26 kilowatt hours. With our 15 kilowatt hour battery, you could sustain this load for approximately 3.5 days, providing reliable power for your basic needs during an emergency. You can also integrate a generator to recharge your batteries. The EG4 6000 XP supports a maximum AC input of 9000 watts. You can also charge with a smaller generator. I recommend using about 70% of the generator output power for optimal performance. For example, a 10 kW generator at 70% would give us 7 kW. Considering a charging efficiency of 90%, this means the system will charge at 6.3 kW. To recharge a 15 kWh battery at 6.3 kW, it will take approximately 2.5 hours. So every three and a half days, you would need to run the generator for two and a half hours if you don't have solar. If you set up your solar panels as previously demonstrated and or located in Houston, Texas, you'll receive an average of 3.5 sun hours per day during winter, the season with the least sunlight. With 8000 watts of solar panels, you can generate approximately 28 kilowatt hours of energy per day during winter. That's more than enough to recharge your 15 kilowatt hour battery bank twice a day, providing ample energy. To size your solar panels correctly, the goal is to recharge your 15 kilowatt hour battery within a single day, using this formula. 15 kilowatt hours divided by 3.5 sun hours 
equals 4,300 watts of solar panels. This means you will only need 4,300 watts of solar panels to reliably recharge your 15 kilowatt hour battery bank on an average winter day, the worst case scenario of the year. If you're interested in diving deeper, check out my playlist on DIY solar systems if your country doesn't have the EG4 hybrid inverter. If you're interested in reading my best-selling book, check it out as well. Please like the video if you found it useful. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.